It is always a celebration here in the city of New Orleans, and we are just outside of the French Quarter at the Superdome. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. Happy to be with you. And, CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical, who wins up front, who runs the ball the best and controls the clock, they will come out the victor. Glad you're with us. It's Blake Groupie to get this one started, and off we go here in New Orleans. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, the Bucs get ready to go on offense for the first time, and it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer at his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce-back season last year, nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he was rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. And he gets this to the 35, good for a gain of five. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. In motion left, Godwin. Play clock hit zero. Don't know what went wrong there, Charles, but it's going to cost some five yards. Has to be some organization from the sideline. Sometimes when you're trying to decide on what play to send in, the play caller has to move a little bit faster. In motion right, one of the tight ends. To throw, Mayfield. There's Evans again, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. Well, he's one of the top receivers in the game, Charles, so no surprise here on the opening drive. They want to get him involved, and he has catches on back-to-back -back plays. And, Brandon, I look at it from the defense's perspective. You know he's one of the top receivers in the game. You've got to find ways to slow him down because if he gets into high gear, he's going to shred you all game long. On a delay of game there, they could not get the playoff in time. Frustrating for the head coach, frustrating for the offense. Sometimes you have to get the play call in a little bit quicker. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. They run for the first time. Here with Rashad White. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Three yards on the gain. They're going to need to do better on this next play. It'll be third and 12. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Mayfield. And a catch right side by Evans. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, 
And then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Throwing now is Carr. Drives the left side and finds Alave. So give him two yards there on the completion. Third and seven now. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. Oh, they had a good chance to get off the field defensively there. If they could just wrap up, it's going to be a fourth down. But instead, they can't get him on the deck, and he allows them to pick up the first down. to throw his car. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 11 yards for number 11. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Again, it's Carr. That's caught by his tight end, Foster Moreau. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers will get involved as this game goes on. Here's Carr. His throw here's incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Shotgun now for Carr. That is caught, and he is going to have a Saints first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. To throw its car. And he'll get this one underneath to Camara, And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. and That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts in order to make him. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. 
You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Carr to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long. Then here, just nothing available. And he's got to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Carr. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Foster Moreau, 28 yards. And the Saints get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And the good kick pays off as he's only able to get this out past the 10-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, 21 yards. I tell you what, when you're down on the scoreboard, you've got to look to your stars, and that's what they do here to start the drive. I wouldn't be surprised if they looked his way a few more times in short order. That one, well designed, and it's a quick first down. So a penalty that can frustrate a coach so much, a mental error, and it'll back him up five yards. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Mayfield looks to throw. Evans has it left side. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And 24 yards the game there, another first down as well. And if you look up the word consistency in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of Mike Evans pop right up. He's eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark in each of his previous 10 years in the NFL, and he's hoping to make it 11 straight at the conclusion of this season. But the payoff with him, he finds the end zone. Tied for the league lead last year in touchdown receptions with 13. First down, here's White. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Mayfield. Wide open receiver complete. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense could get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. Mayfield to throw it. 
And this is incomplete. That one was tipped up in the air and fortunately fell away for the defense because if the offense is able to grab that one, that's a short little jaunt into the end zone because there's not enough reaction time off of a tip ball for the defense to rally and make a tackle. They were very fortunate on that play. White will score. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A drive that time of six plays. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Pushing his way through. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air. So now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie. When you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. He can do it all, can he? You can see the shake and bake. But he has some surprising power as well. And boy, is he consistent. 1,100 yards from scrimmage for the seventh straight season last year. The pass caught by Alave. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Kamara up the middle, and he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. Third and two. Car going to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Flag comes out, and that's because the offense did not get the playoff in time. And you can see the head coach, he is not happy. Everyone getting away from him right now because he's frustrated that they didn't get the ball snapped in time. Now Carr. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Juwan Jackson, 29 yards, and the Saints have taken the lead. And what a weapon he is at the tight end spot because when they throw him the football downfield, they count on him getting additional yardage almost every time, and that's exactly what he did there. Caught that, ran with it, all the way to the end zone.
Here's Groupie for the PAT. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Mayfield. Out route and the ball is caught by Godwin. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Mayfield on play action. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Evans. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. The fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first and ten deep in their own territory. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and ten at their own 14-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. It gets this complete to Shahid. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. We've caught a lot of gains, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Card out of throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Levante David. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw or maybe the ball's tipped or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. So first and 10 now from the 30. Following the interception, Mayfield. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. A good hands there defensively at second down. They take to the air on the first play of the drive, and the pass just a little bit off there. I thought there was some turbulence in the pocket there. Took him off platform, off schedule, unable to get set and make a nice throw. 
So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Mayfield now. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover, and they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal. Mayfield. Yeah, he's got it. Touchdown. Chris Godwin from eight yards out. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from drawing level. McLaughlin for the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A drive there of just four plays. And it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he'll return this one all the way onto the other side of the field. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They start from scratch here, so to speak. 14 all following the interception last time that led to a score. Now they've got it first and 10. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. Shifts by him. Oh, he sheds himself free. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 36 yards on the play. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's in the cornerback position. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. Again, it's Kamara. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Alvin Kamara, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Saints have taken the lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. And the point after, goodbye groupie. And the lead is now 21-14. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run.
After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. The drive starts with a run by White. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. Now flags, and we're going to get a delay of game. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. In motion left, Shepard. To throw, Mayfield. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now it's third and three. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Now here's Trenton Gill on to punt. This is taken at the 15. It's a 45-yard punt, then eight on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The Saints offense and the veteran Alvin Kamara getting set for this next possession. And as a play caller, when you've got a guy who's running like this, you lean on him and your offensive line. He's had big hole after big hole to run through in this first half. He completes it to Alave. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. And that play came together really well for them as he found open space, makes the catch, and gets down to the one-yard line. You know he's kicking himself right now. He thought he had a chance to get a touchdown and put that in his ledger. Instead, his team gets a chance to cash in over these next few plays. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 86 yards rushing now for Kamara. It's a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. To throw his car. Pitch and catch to Moreau, the tight end. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Two yards to go, second down. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. A give to Camaro running right. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. In motion comes the tight end left. Carr. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. 
That'll put him at an even 50 receiving yards now in this first half. And it's a first down. Well, this might very well have been four down territory, but that's not going to matter now. They get a nice throw there on third down, and they're able to keep the drive going. And they're not going to get this one off in time. It'll be a delay. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Now Carr. His throw incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Shotgun now for Carr. Alave over the middle. So the completion good for six yards. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Again, it's Carr. Pitch and catch to Moreau, the tight end. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. So Carr departs and on his Blake groupie for the Saints field goal. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And his kick here is good. And the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So it's fourth and one. They wind up taking the three. But I'm not sure that that offensive unit, judging by the sideline, <laughs> Charles was in 100% agreement with the decision. No, not at all. But the head coach has final call on this. We know that. But let's face it. Offenses want to feel like, hey, you believe in us? Let us go for it? We'll see if that is a problem for them moving forward in this game. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Buccaneers offense ready to rock and roll again. They're down now 24-14. Work to do as they come up on a first and 10. In motion left goes a tight end. This ball complete to Durham. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Just need a yard here, second and one. They'll go up the middle with White. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. This is White on the screen. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Mayfield now from the 50. And that is incomplete here. Looking for Kate Otten that time. That'll bring up second down. Ooh. 
Throwing Mayfield. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Here's Mayfield. And he is caught. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it's so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, and they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. Now, that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. This second and four. Mayfield with it once more. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Mayfield to throw it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Every now and then you have some volleyball training actually comes into play as a defender. When a ball is tipped in the air, nice play by the defense. Got a hand on it. But when it's in the air, it's up for grabs. And too many times in this league, we've seen great plays happen for an offense as a result of a ball tipped in the air. So what you really want to do is be that guy who comes off the back line and spikes it, knocks it to the ground. Don't let them have that opportunity. The well, Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go to try to go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. Mayfield looks to throw. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans as the first half is winding down. And the Bucs are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up. And we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and that cuts the lead to three, 24-21. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Now, couldn't take the chance. This will be returned from the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And with only nine seconds remaining, with not much time, we'll see how they play this. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. 
So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll get you over to Orlando where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. For the Saints, this is why they signed him. They got a strong performance from their quarterback, Derek Carr. He came out of the gate smoking hot with two first quarter touchdown passes to help steer his guys towards this halftime lead. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Saints offense and Derek Carr ready for this next possession. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Now Carr, and that's incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll set up to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Carr. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Here's a second and eight. Opting to run again here with White. And a short gate across the 15 to the 17-yard line. For the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Now Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down.
He'll look to throw. On the left side, a catch by White. A good pickup of six there on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second and four. Now the play clock hits zero here, and we're going to get a delay. Following the delay, here's second and nine. Mayfield now. He's got Otten. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. And again, it's Mayfield. Over the middle to Evans. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and eight. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Lightning speed that time from the corner. Marshawn Lattimore getting the sack. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Mayfield. And this is Shepard on the catch. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. I'll give him credit there. Nice job on the drag route. Bring the receiver across the field, hoping he can catch it in stride and turn it up. He was able to do just that, although he's just a little bit short of the first down. And his kick is good. And that will tie us at 24-all. So give him three on that drive. You know, normally you'd say, we'll take it. But the way points have been flying around, it feels like a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, you just have to wonder, are field goals going to be enough? Because as you pointed out, the way touchdowns have been scored, does kicking a field goal actually put you at a disadvantage the rest of the way? And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The home team's offense and their running back getting set for this next possession. And you have to imagine this defense saying, how do we stop this guy? He has run roughshod through him to this point in the third quarter. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. Now Carr over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Here's Kamara out of the pistol. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
Coming in to put a lick on him was Levante David. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. Snap comes at one, and it's Carr. On the check down, he finds Kamara. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. So offense moving a little too slow there, could not get set, and they get the penalty. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Car now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. That's taken on the 25. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Buccaneers offense and Baker Mayfield set to take over once more. The Bucs offense set to begin their next possession. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. In motion left, Godwin. To throw, Mayfield. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They run straight ahead here with White. And I don't think he got there. No. He's short by maybe a foot. Maybe. Call it fourth and inches. I know they want to go for it here, and I know that their fans want them to go for it. But listen, I'm going to play head coach right here and look at the facts. Tie game. Plus, even if you get the first, you still got a half a field to go. I go ahead and punt the football myself. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Taking it about the 16. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That'll be taken in by Shahid. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to bring up second down. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10.
Here's Carr to throw. Gets this complete to Shahid. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Caught. It's Wilson. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now second and nine. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Oh, he tries to force it in and it's intercepted. Picked up by Levante David. And the Bucs are going to take over here up near the 40. All right, Brandon. Normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking must be a free safety, maybe a corner. How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. And that's another great play to come away with the football. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Uh, Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. This is caught by Evans, and he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 23 yards, the final tally. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Out route, and the ball is caught by Godwin. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. And Mayfield just getting the playoff. There's a short one taken in by Otten. So just three yards on the completion there. And now two yards to go on third down. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. By the way, you'd be looking at about a 47-yarder from here as they come up on an important third down. They go play action. Mayfield. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter time. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? And running with power here. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And they really need to forget about their last time out, the turnover that led to a field goal. So now they try to regroup, trailing in the final quarter. Obviously, they'd love a touchdown, but three would suffice. And that's another throw that could have been intercepted. Part of this, you credit the defense. They've been really stingy. 
but he's also made some really questionable throws. And that's another one right there. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. He'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. With all the success they've had throwing the football as a pass rusher, you know you've got to come hard when you see him drop back to throw. So I really like this call to counteract that pass rush with a screen. It turns into positive yardage. A lot of times the offense says, just replace the rusher with the ball, and it turns into a good play. And he is going to have a Saints first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. Now Carr. Oh, he'll look downfield for Camara. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. A beautiful fake. So they tried to take the deep shot there, but this defense up to the task. And a lot of times when you air a ball out like this, if it does get intercepted, there's going to be a lot of space out there to set up a return. And remember, you've got five big offensive linemen out there playing on their feet in open space. Not a skill most of them possess that allows for extra yardage on the return. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. They stay on the ground with White. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. And this is the worry because sometimes you can get a little too predictable in spots like this. You know you're going to run the ball, but they know you're going to run the ball as well. And now you look up and you're staring at an important third down. The Bucks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and four. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Throwing Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. And they just did not get the snap away in time. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Buying time to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Demario Davis coming in for the sack that time. Like the footwork back there, I thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. In motion left, Godwin. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He finds his target. It's Evans. And he's going to be marked down short of the first down, right around the 17. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to swell the lead to six. And his kick is right there. It's good, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The home team's offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And it's been a struggle for him all afternoon. This defense has really done a nice job of making him earn everything he gets. And it's prevented him from getting into any kind of rhythm here today. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And that last turnover could have proven more costly, but their defense only gave up three. But now answering with a field goal doesn't do them much on this drive. They need to try and find the end zone. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Car going to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this offense hasn't been at their best here. They've made some mistakes. They've been frustrated. They've been largely shut down. But then you look up and say, wait a second. This is a one-score game. So they're still very much in this, and they're on the move here with a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Car to throw again. Wilson's got it complete. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. This one underneath to Kamara, and he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Wilson. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Now a second and two. Play action. Now it's Carr. Going right side here, and that's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 14. A good pick up there, a 22. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. 
Now Carr. And a completion to Wilson. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Here's Kamara. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Here's Carr. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, you have to be aware defensively that you've got two goals because obviously you're trying to prevent the touchdown, but you're also trying to keep it from getting a first down as well. That time they weren't up to the task, and it's first and goal. Card out of throw. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. To throw, it's Carr. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure, and it's a loss of six. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. Third down and goal coming up here. The slot man in motion right. Carr now on third and goal. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They come up on the play of the game now, fourth and goal. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. Now Carr, got to have this one. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Cedric Wilson, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? A very important extra point there, up and good, and that is going to put them on top by a point, and it sets us up for quite a finish. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Buccaneers offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes a right read seemingly every time. He completes it right side to white. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield.
Here comes second down at five. Mayfield to throw. And he is going to lose yardage here. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And we constantly talk about people being on the same page. In this situation, the two of them saw the play with the same eyes. They understood where the open spaces were going to be, and they found a way to get there to pick up a new set of downs. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Here's Baker. Here's White. They set up the screen. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Now Mayfield. That's complete to Otten. Not good. They didn't move the football an inch and precious time ticking off the clock. Another try. Second and ten now. Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Mayfield. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. Well, you knew you had to take some chances here with the clock winding down, needing a touchdown to win it. And that one might have just sealed their fate. Yeah, and that's the nature of the two-minute drill. The offense trying to go downfield and make their plays. But defenses, they're sitting back watching everything that they do, but not too far back. They want to be in position to make a play on the ball, and that they did. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. A man who's been busy this afternoon. It's Kamara again. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here, and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. down to a knee and that ought to just about do it and how about this finish able to take a knee run out the clock and close this game out by one point you talk about <laughs> how many how many coaches we talked to they all said to say all i want to do is win by yep. one point that got tested in this one yep and that cliche rings true a single penny separates this one And his kick is indeed good, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. So this one, a victory here for New Orleans. And a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ball game. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games. 
So when you get something that goes against the grain, like the one we saw here, it's quite the oddity. Now, let's face it, they'll be very happy that they pulled this off, but they do know that in the future, they've got work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.